Hello, I'm Milo, and my pronouns are they, then. Welcome back to the stream, and I'm joined again by a special guest. Kathy! Yay! My pronouns are she, her. Hello. Hello. So, um, today we're playing a DOS game, although it was also released on Windows and Macintosh in 1997. It's called whoop, Window Priority. It's called ugh, Caps Lock. It's called C Time 3. Also known as Where in Time is Common San Diego. Also known as uh, Common San Diego's Great Chase Through Time. Now, this is not to be confused with the 1989 game called Where in Time is Common San Diego, which was very much in the mold of the earlier formula of Common San Diego games. You know, collecting clues, doing quizzes. This one breaks the mold. It's a point-and-click adventure game in the style what was very popular in 1997. Now, you have played the original game, right? I think so, yeah. The I think I played it on a black and white Mac, like, probably actually, like, the year before this one came out. Um, <laughs> so quite late. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, you know, when you're a kid, almost. you just play what you have. And... <laughs> Captain, is it chat roasting me about point-and-click adventure games? Oh. It's true, I don't have that much familiarity with the genre, but I have actually played this game to completion as a child, so oh. it's part of you know, one of the few games of this type that I've played. So these options all look good, but we'll add interrupting. That's nice. And um, this game was praised at the time for things like its educational content, but also for its accessibility settings. We've got hearing impaired assistance um, as an option here. Um, but we don't need that. Whoa, that's loud. Frick. Like, the intro was nowhere near as loud as that, eh? So loud! Okay. Ooh, we start with the credits. <laughs> yeah, it's very cinematic. That's mm. what they're going for. Um, and it's part of the whole presentation of this game in the new point-and-click paradigm. Uh, it's got a lot of cartoony characters, although um, some of them, like the good guy ones, originated in a remaster of Where in the World is Come, San Diego from 1996, the, the previous year. Mm -hmm. But the villains um, and sort of the kind of lore and, and the theme song as well originate from uh, a TV show. Oh! Um, so from, hang on, I've got my notes here. Yeah, from a different time and place in history, your job is to steal a historical object. Each of you will receive a note revealing exactly where to hide until I pick you up. Don't forget, tear up that note so no Acme agents can track you down. This is all very important, I'm sure. Skimmer activated. History awaits. You can see all the villains in this tiny little window. <laughs> 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 um... They were appearing on the screen before anyway. But um, yeah, so starting in 1991, there was a TV show in America, a sort of kids game show, sort of like our Amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she was the chief in the show and they brought her into the game from that. Cool. As well as other things like the characters and the theme song, like I said. Okay, and this is really quiet, so I'm gonna have to ride the audio now, balance thing in oops. And they're okay. on their way to steal historic treasures from the Now, do you recognize this person? Yes. Yeah? She was on Sesame Street. Oh, I didn't see that in her IMDb, but I believe it. Um, the thing that caught my eye when I was looking at her filmography was, well, what's your favorite Easter movie? Favorite Easter movie? Mm -hmm. Godspell. She... Oh, she is. Mm -hmm. So this is Lynn Thigpen. Oh, 
who also, I guess one of her other recurring roles is playing the moon in Bear in the Big Blue House. <laughs> um, it's takeoff time, time pilot. Yeah, I don't know. She's a working actor. She's been a lot of stuff. Once you're in the past, I'll be out of contact. <laughs> in fact, Captain somehow missed all of Carmen San Diego media growing up. I missed I'll most of it except this game. <laughs> so I wasn't aware of all this context. This no. Uh, but Gibbon seems you're excited about it. The way back to mm. Egypt, where there's something vile on the Nile. Queen Hatshepsut vile is the name of the evil organization. The now, but it hasn't happened. Find out why. Ooh. Here's antiquity now. All the ally characters have very punny names. <laughs> so Gibbon's saying she was she watched the the TV show. So it was broadcast on PBS, the public broadcaster in America. From 1991, they did this like geography quiz game show thing with animated sequences and characters and like a live band and stuff. Oh, cool. Um. And that was Where in the World is Come San Diego. That ran for five years. And in 96, they transitioned it into the Where in Time is Come San Diego show to focus on history instead and parlay that into this game. And thus a reinvention of the game series as well. Unfortunately, it only lasted two seasons before it was cancelled. Oh. We've talked over all the tutorializing, but this is pretty simple. It's a game for kids. Um, but... We're going to be looking at how good it portrays history, because Kathy's <laughs> a bit of a history buff. Julie's also in chat. Hello. Gibbon has been humming the theme tune to herself. <laughs> so Captain, um, growing up in Hawaii, can only get PBS in black and white. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> but knows the theme song very well. Okay, so this is like a huge blast of nostalgia for me. I haven't played this game since I was a kid. Um... Actually, I went over to a kid's house in year seven, and he had the same game. And we were like, oh, that's cool. But that's probably the last time I played it. So, at any time you can open up this encyclopedia, which is supposed to be pretty good about, you know, facts and stuff. Approved by Encyclopedia Britannica. Mm. Um, but in addition to this, there was a manual booklet you could get, and a website, because this is 1997, uh which has a lot of the same sort of hints uh, and stuff like that. So we've got that open in case we want to look up some more historical facts or tips for gameplay because we might get stuck. <laughs> uh, April's here too. Oh, a Saturday morning cartoon. I'm not aware of that. <laughs> I guess I didn't research good enough, but I know that um, the game show led into this game. I don't know how the cartoon was related to that, but there were animated characters in the game show Mm -hmm. um, and the voice of Carmen Sandiego from the second series of t of the Time version reprises a role in this game. I know that much. All right, let's get started by talking to this Welcome, boatman. strangers. You can talk to me by selecting any of the questions below. Uh, okay. Who you ask? Why Hatshepsut is the great queen and pharaoh of Upper and Lower Egypt? Also, this game has a very large voice cast, but it does not have an entry on behind the voice actors. Nor does the game have an entry on Moby Games. Mm. Uh, but there is an IMDb page for it, where I found a list of um, actors. I didn't really recognize too many, but when we meet someone, I might tell you about them. So. Some of these will help us, like, the solving the puzzles, but other things house. are just explaining stuff about history, which is really cool. Gibbon says there was also a recent reboot of the cartoon on Netflix. Um, I read that there was at least an animated interactive film on Netflix, <laughs> which is one of the latest uh, games, quote-unquote games, in the series. The um, I don't know how it works exactly. <laughs> Netflix does have a game rental service as well, or they did, I don't know. But this was like a cartoon, and then you choose something, and then it plays out differently. I don't really know. Okay. She needs the Egyptian Book of the Dead. So, yeah, the idea is the, the villains have gone through history and stolen important items. In this case, it's the Book of the Dead of Ancient Egypt. 
some say that a strangely um, attired rogue now we're in the time of hatch episode one of the female pharaohs the, the, the time was given us 1450 bce and they do say bce which is pretty cool for 1997 to use the, well the terminology. bce terminology has been in, in use not in mm. mainstream use since like the 1700s oh wow okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> To move that bag, pilot, click down and hold. Then drag it up onto the boat. Also, I'm pretty sure the Book of the Dead mm. It's not like a book that you could steal. It's like... If you think of it like... Like a widely published book. <laughs> like it's not a book. <laughs> Um, All is and it got like now drawn or like written onto the walls of later tombs. To yeah, Captain, we have the Chrono Skimmer, or Carmen San Diego does. Did we just ride in her slipstream or something? I don't know. But um, yeah, the, there's an earlier game from 1989 with the same title, which makes this game very hard to search for, uh, that establishes the time travel law. <laughs> Yes, Carmen Sandiego is the bad guy. You're always chasing after her in the series. Until the recent things, including the Netflix uh, series, or whatever it is. Um, part of the story of that is that she's defecting back to the good guys, which is an interesting mm. twist, I think. Alright, so we got shoes the at the edges of the screen. Down oh, down oh okay. Fine. The they want us to take the boat. Hello again. Can you believe the troubles besetting poor Queen Hatshepsut? As you wish, hold on while I push off. What a smooth trip down the Nile. Well, here we oh, are at the Oh, she's temple. just there. The okay. Over there must <laughs> be Hatshepsut. Okay. Uh, Good day, I think she's now. wearing the crown of Have you come Lower Egypt. Mm. But her dress is not that's like a modern dress. <laughs> uh, but it's got like a uh, little triangles on it. Yeah. Squinting at the tiny window. All is in crisis. First my husband. So there was a note about her wearing a beard. Um, apparently, historians. This is what I read on Wikipedia. Like historians aren't sure whether she wore it while she was alive or whether it was just included in depictions over her and statues and stuff. Yeah. Because it's like part of the being pharaoh. So like, would she have actually worn it in the same way that like a monarch wears a crown, but you don't wear it every day? Does she mm, wear that true. every day? We don't know. Does she wear the lower kingdom crown every day? Yeah. Were the kingdoms united at this point? I don't remember, but I would guess so. They tend to get split up during the intermediate periods. Mm. Captain asks, who are the good guys that we're playing as? So we're playing as the Acme uh, spy agency or whatever. <laughs> it's called Acme. Um, uh, led by the chief, as played by Lynn Thigpen. Um, and your character is an anonymous, an anonymous player cipher. But we're helped out by these other agents who dress very casually, I must say. Mm. Although maybe they're doing that to blend in. Do you think this is blending in with no. ancient Egypt? <laughs> and who are you that you do not know? I am his majesty. Makare Hatshitsut, esteemed pharaoh over the upper and lower lands of Egypt. Indeed, I am a woman. But since Egyptian pharaohs are typically male, convention demands that I be addressed as a man and wear an official beard. It is a strange situation, but nothing I cannot handle. I don't think she's dressed as a man. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I was talking about the beard. Like the people who made the game are aware of when the my husband, like II passed on, ambiguity son, over whether Tatmos the living Hatshepsut wore the beard. And, and they chose to include it um, anyway. And this is an example of some of the, like, times that they tweaked, you know, what is a uh, really accepted historical fact for the sake of uh, telling the story or whatever. Mm. 
<clears throat> yeah, it seems like probable historical, like mm. or historical plausibility rather than defined fact. My head mm. freeze labors at the side of my late husband. <laughs> Interesting accent she's rocking, so that's good then. I could, um, look up the, uh, the list. <laughs> Hatshepsut, a popular choice in, uh, Civilization 4, apparently. Oh. I don't think of her as the, like, archetypal female hey, pharaoh because Cleopatra is close to the questions. front of my mind, but she's a good one. I mean, if you want an Egyptian pharaoh yeah. of Egypt. True. Cleopatra's <laughs> Greek. <laughs> oh, I did. Yeah, I wasn't logged in. Um, okay. I'm trying to find the list of actors. Is this a prequel to the documentary The Mummy with Brendan Fraser? That's a good question, because the Book of the Dead figured heavily in that too. <laughs> um, so this would have been before that, I think. But ancient Egypt has always been a popular time of history mm. for primary school. <laughs> Uh, okay, list of actors. Yeah, as Gibbon points out, it's got grade school vibes. Oh. Um, Wrong version. Which is definitely, yeah, like those books that you get in primary school that are just like, oh, here's a story about ancient Egypt and does not cover what is fact and what is probable and, yeah. As a kid... I ate that up. <laughs> I was mad keen on ancient Egypt. Um, I, I I could not get enough. I'm not really sure why I was so interested in ancient Egypt. Hey, that must be a shred of the secret note Carmen wrote for her thief. It's very romantic. Once we find all the pieces of Carmen's note, we'll be able to deduce the thief's hiding spot. Okay. Um, so Hatshepsut in this game is played by Maximilian Ewalt. If you've ever heard of her, okay, go off. All right. So we're gonna find these scraps the of paper of that tell us where the, the They're much more key thing is. The old and we always have these handcuffs because we're cops. Uh, we're we're looking for the baddie who will be disguised or whatever. And when we figure out who it is, we slap the cuffs on him. Julie says, this player character has extreme lesbian vibes, affectionate. <laughs> yeah, this is antiquity. Um, if you go to the cutting room floor, there's a listing for this game that uh, describes a demo version which had different graphics. Mm. Um, it also details over 400 unused voice lines that are in the game files but unused. Oh wow. But there's tons of used lines, um, as you can tell. They're talking mm. all the time. Yes, antiquity. It's not spelled like that, it's spelled stupider than that. Um, so is there a thing where we have to pick My the right containers Egyptian and stuff? Rusty. No, I can't quite maybe. translate the hieroglyphs on these jars. I'll bet Thutmose II looked better when he was ruling 10 million people. We recently removed the pharaoh's internal organs and packed him in salty natron to dry out. He has had better days. Um, oh yeah, and... Uh, I wouldn't call her the player character either. Like, she's helping us, and we'll get different people helping us on each case. Um, although she shows up a few times. There's 19 total cases in this game. Um, there were originally going to be 20, but they can't one. In, here. in between oh, this and yeah, the next. I learned that from TCR for some a piece of Carmen's note. Okay. 
That wasn't very enlightening. How do we line out touch? Parts of this tomb are as dark as the eternal night. You'll need a light. Do time cops count for a cab? <laughs> Gibbons trying to workshop an Acme a cab pun. Um, but Gibbon calls them private agents. So this is like impossible mission force or like. Uh, is control and get smart private? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, this is weird Greetings, sort of gray friend. area that it's a lot of popular me. media has yeah, where they're like the mummy. super Perhaps spies and like stuff, but they're not government <laughs> <laughs> agents We've for some reason. Transforming it's really weird. Dear into a proper mummy for his trip to the afterlife. But all my assistants have run off looking for the thief who is the Acme Corp linked to the, the Looney Tunes Wiley Coyote this mummy all Acme by myself. Corp. Yeah, why not? Let's say yes. Well, Otherwise, they'd actually, sue each other for use of the I'm name. I'm at a loss. As head priest, I rarely have to do the dirty work myself. I'm really more of a mummy manager. So, with my helpers gone, I don't know what to do next. That's correct. The Somewhere head priests were usually tomb, like nobles. A second set of and mummy we're making instructions. We're just in terms of. Although, priest, like. The actual head priest adjusted. of every Luckily, cult was technically the pharaoh, but he delegated that to like people he would appoint. Hmm. Just like the Queen That's of England. That's an unlit torch. Hello oh, again. Gonna light it. What Not happened to you? Exactly. The instructions will. Okay. Well, here's a lit torch. That's an unlit torch. Yeah, I know. Oh, we gotta drag it. Okay. Click and drag. Way to go. Sick. Now we'll turn up the heat on this case. May the gods protect you. <laughs> Since Acme has access to time travelers, Captain's theorizing that this is how Wily Coyote um, got his stuff so fast. Okay, so stick, snake, semicircle, jar, mm -hmm. stick, leaf, bird. Semicircle. Uh, the Nile. <laughs> Ticket stub. <laughs> yeah. And then head and line. Okay. Hmm. Did you see those hieroglyphs on yes, the wall? Yes, I did. I wonder what they mean. Well, I I think Enough I know what they mean. Exploring. Are you ready? To oh, that's so tiny. Ready to squint. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yes. This one. <laughs> okay, pilot. Let's start the ceremony. Correct. The oil keeps the skin. You might need a bit more than that. Cool. Who's gonna rub the it in? The glyphs on that jar really do mean oil. Nice, nice. And then uh, it was stick and leaf. Yeah. The bandages. Ah, yes. That's right. This resin-soaked cloth this guy's so protects clueless. the body from air and helps it hold the proper shape. Even in death, a pharaoh must keep up appearances. Excellent. More genuine hieroglyphs decoded. So they're claiming they're genuine. I have no reason to doubt that. This mm. mask is adorned with prayers to protect the mummy's head from evil. That's not something spirits. we can fact check them on. Praise the gods. That's a wrap. We still need the book of the dead. <laughs> Great fun. But for now, let's move <laughs> the a lot of fun writing this game. Final <laughs> okay, so we got Whoa, notes about the burial, burial chamber. Tomb. Let's dig out our thief and recover the Egyptian book of the dead. All right. That's the final piece of Carmen's note. Let's read it, then use the chronopedia to figure out mm. the hidden meaning. Encouraging use of the encyclopedia. We'll know the spot where our thief is hiding. The King of Gods. I'll activate the time cuff straight away. Once, so once you have all the clues, they activate the thing and then you use them. And I guess they're not disguised, they're hiding the somewhere. And you use the info to figure that out. Note means. Um, there were versions of this game uh, made for use in classroom situations that came with a uh, mm. like teacher's guide and lessons plans and stuff. Makes sense. I think earlier games might have had more printed encyclopedia reference stuff, mm. but this one has it all digital because this is the age we're living in. This is um, when we got our Windows 95 computer, we had Encarta Encyclopedia installed. Mm. This is that era. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff here about. Egypt, what we're looking for is 
king of the gods, Amun-Ra, the sun god. So, can we? This slender, yeah, here we go. He gets stuff. Is thought More info on each one. The Egyptian god of wisdom, a real philosophical sort. Yeah, I don't know why that's they're time cuffs the instead of just normal handcuffs, but I guess the they have Osiris some technology that sends the villain through time. Back. Bullseye. Carmen's note pointed to the king of the gods, and that means Amun Re, the Egyptian sun god. I thought it was Amun Ra. Well, I guess we don't really know. Sealed shut. Servile is under wraps, and the Book of the Dead is back on track. Wait, did we get the Book of the Dead? I guess he has it. Yeah. Let's go, Servile. We've got a nice, damp acme cell where you can kick back and rust. Captain says, imagine time cuffing the wrong person. <laughs> I think you can, and, and like, your guide person just says, no, that's wrong, try again. <laughs> Congratulations! You snagged that sneaky servile! Bagged the Book of the Dead and even managed to mummify a pharaoh. I salute you. <laughs> Thanks to you, the ancient ruler will have laughter in the afterlife and Egyptian history is restored. Maybe you do ruin history, but they're trying to ruin history. We're trying to fix it. We're, we're regular Doctor Who's over here. Doctors Who. Ready to get right back to work? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna do all 19 cases today. Mm, maybe not. <laughs> do you want to see if there's any more fun facts about Egypt in the manual? For some reason, Rome's amazing water system is completely dry. You'd better find out why. Oh, Roman aqueducts. How many times a day do you think about that? This case calls for a master engineer. That's why I'm sending along um, at the inventor extraordinaire. I have an idea as oh, your good clues guy. and hints. He's got yeah, we didn't need those. We were too smart. Yeah. Good luck with the case time pilot and dip a toe in the So the next uh, section of the manual after that, I think, maybe. Yeah, so this is the hint. Hey yeah. there, pilot. I'm and your good guy. That? I have an idea. Can you believe what, oh, what a dweeb. Look at this dork. Caesar is right over there. I wonder why he looks so wiped out. Hail, strangers. Lend me your ears. Some wretched renegade has stolen the forum and vandalized Wait. our great city's plumbing in the bargain. How are you we stealing the with forum? Caesar and see what's <clears throat> up? Great question. I think this happened a lot in the older games. They would steal just arbitrary things. I don't know much about the original Cam San Diego games, but I've played a bit of uh, Mario is Missing, um, which is, has the exact same format, I understand, where they're always stealing, like, landmarks and buildings and stuff. Take a look at that it doesn't stuff. make any sense. Um, Gibbon noted that there's a couple different sun gods, depending on which period of Egyptian yeah. history you're looking at. The pantheon evolved with the shifting geopolitical landscape. Fascinating. Yes. Good day. And forgive my distracted state. The I don't know why we're just allowed to talk to Julius Caesar. I am Julius he is. Caesar, powerful leader, and soon to be Emperor of Rome. <laughs> Military brilliance, my friend. I am a clever and fearless yes. general, and I have commanded the best trained legions in all the Roman Empire. Also, yes. I made my reputation as a general, but lately I've been focusing on politics. I brought order to the rowdy Roman streets, and I plan to introduce the 365-day calendar any month now. Yeah? <laughs> Captain wants us to do this. Sorry, champ. We can't use the time cuffs until we Sorry, have champ. all the pieces of cards <laughs> <known. laughs> I'll come back when they're active. Greetings once more. My uh... When the thief escaped, he knocked many of the sewer pipes out of place. Okay. We have a serious failure of Maybe the thief is result. like... A giant Godzilla or something. <laughs> Why? Everyone needs clean water to drink and bathe, and the latrines must carry away unhealthy wastes. If the sewers are not fixed, things will get ugly fast. I heard that the fact that they had sewer pipes lined with lead Hulk may have Centurions led to a lot of health Caesar. problems within Rome. Uh, not the sewer pipes, because you don't drink the no, sewer water. But the, the water the pipes. <laughs> yes. In and out, yes. There are two pipes. Yes. 
Julie's saying these videos are so cheesy and good. Hulk yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm trying to more. skip ahead, but you have to go through I the dialogue you'd first. Never ask. Go find my head plumber who was working yeah, the streets um, of Rome. He could there's a lot of, you know, the scattered sewers. voice actors involved, as I was saying. Um, I can try and figure out yes, who's playing Julius Caesar. One. Some wretch stole the whole city block that houses the but it's like a huge list, so I gotta scroll a lot, you know. Here it is, Paul Costanzo. Ever heard of him? I haven't. Nope. Okay, what is the, the forum? forum? Is the center of all government, business, law, and religion. Rome will be lost without it. And so, how was it stolen exactly? The villain escaped through our sewer system before my legionnaires yeah, could grab him, skip over that. wrecking the pipes in his rush. Until later, farewell. It's about time you laborers arrived to fix the plumbing. <laughs> no one can bathe properly without flowing water. So there's a little tip that I heard about the characters in the game. If they're given a first and last name, that means they're based on a real historical person. Mm. But if they're just sort of given a description, then they're a fictional character made up for the game. In Paul Costanzo sounds like a knockoff actor in a movie nonsense. making fun of Hollywood. A Hollywood movie making fun of Hollywood, says Gibbon. Justinian is my name. Oh, Justinian. Just your regular dashing and handsome Roman. Mm, Enjoying that was an emperor, Justinian. Bath. Much later, I think. Why, they're a yes. welcome event for me. I come to exercise, cleanse my body, and listen to gossip. Mm, Unfortunately, accurate. there's not much of a crowd today. I'm not surprised. Oh, this should be interesting. Soap? What <laughs> is a uh, soap? <laughs> no, no. I rub olive oil over my body, scrape it off with a strigel, and rinse with fresh water. I Clean mean, a whistle. you don't. A slave does. <laughs> <laughs> they might not cover that aspect of Roman culture in this game. What? We're not covering Here's slavery? Gossip. Caesar is getting so powerful and popular that he might declare himself emperor. The Senate is getting so nervous that they may take drastic action. Juicy stuff. No? He was declared dictator for life. Mm. Um, emperor is a later term. Mm. Ah, now there's a debate needing more. They do have to simplify bar. things for the kids' game. Would yeah. yeah. But yeah. The Senate and Caesar share power in Rome. Like, I'm but sure they did a lot of research making this and other. then had to make these sort of decisions. Yeah. I'd love to. But without water, there is not much of a bath. Yes. Indeed. Okay. Hail friends. Oh boy. I could really use Pipe a puzzle. Hand. I remember this. Angry Romans may come flooding down here at any moment. Can you help me with your Latin? We have a job to do. Uh, remember, Fontus, that's the font. Mm -hmm. The tree name, that's the toilets. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Latin for bath. So okay. this pipe must be Thanks, up the Ivan. Tub above. Okay, so we want uh, Aqua to go to the bath. Yes. And Latrina to go down to the outflow. Well, these yeah. parts will help us rebuild the sewer system. I forgot about dragging. There we go. Let's not move these what? little pipes around. Oh, come on. Uh, I'm fine. Greetings. Who are you? I'm Marius Maximus, plebeian plumber of the Roman Republic. Would this guy be a slave? Yeah, probably. The job is essential. Roman plumbing brings fresh water to the public baths and fountains, while also carrying I mean... away <laughs> of waste. Without my services, Rome would be a mess. Lots it of things that we would simple. call jobs really? now would have mm. been slaves, water like going yeah. up to the fountain uh, and bath above, and we need to drain the dirty mm. yep. Yep. water down to that um, trough on the floor. Secretaries. Because you don't. Let's not move these. Are you kidding pipes. me? Hello there. It seems an escaping Sorry. thief. <laughs> sewer pipes out of um, place. If things aren't fixed so, fast, the what was I saying? Uh, about dirty slaves and those jobs that they had. Yeah. So the way we think of companies didn't really finish, didn't we'll exist. The they were just families, the and so. Like there was this. a be a family business, and they, the people that they trusted were members of the family, um, and so they 
like slaves and ex-slaves were like your best employees. So what's the font exactly? Uh, that's the 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 fountain. Oh right, right, right. So they can have clean water too. But we don't want it going one way. Oh, we gotta use this. But oh yeah, one way here so that the latrine doesn't go up there and go straight down there. But this can, right. I guess, be you both ways. Right, you up all the gaps. Time to use the pumps. Hey, there's a note. Yeah. A Carmen note. Our thief must have pipelined right through here. I guess the, like, villain characters are so stupid that they need to have these notes telling them what to do. Mm. And they've left them around. That's why we're able to find them. Okay, uh, pump? Let's apply some muscle. Will you help me pump? Primed this guy doesn't have any pump. muscles. Look at him. Uh, why don't you journey up to the surface and see nerd. if our pipes are working in the daylight? Congratulations! He's supposed the to be a secret agent. Give me a bike now, and I was in sore need of a bath. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I found I this floating in my clean bath water. Have a look. Ooh, Ooh soggy Super paper. Job. You I mean, that's not going to be paper. Ooh. We can decipher the riddle with a little help. But they were given by Carmen San Diego to the villains, presumably in the present. Oh, true. Okay. And not written at the time. Well, what would they have cost. used at Let's the time? Use them where the thief is uh, so vellum, vellum or papyrus? Papyrus. Our plumbing is ailing no mm. longer. Um, in gratitude, and I also host a party in your honor. the Romans were keen on our um, most elaborate togas. Reusable writing party. stuff, Stout. so you get um, Almost like slates. We're here to catch kind of like that. Sorry, so it's a wax. yeah, a wooden board with wax on the top, mm -hmm. and then you scratch your message into it, and then you can heat the wax and smooth it off. Oh, he left before I could use the time cuffs on him. Oh no! Oh, nuts! Because it automatically went into dialogue. Yeah, can you go into the bar? <laughs> go in the bath. Um, oh, you can go into the latrine. The water I think you can just talk about it. Clean. The These uh, chapters are, like, small, and I remember each of them seemed to have three screens. Mm. So they're like these mini bite-sized point-and-click challenges, which is that fun. Water has finally but anyway, out. we have the three notes, so latrine now we're going to start looking for, for so, hey, the villain. Where do you guys keep the toilet paper? <laughs> oh, paper Here we go again. Is much too rare and expensive to be used in that. He knows about manner. paper. Mm. We prefer sponges attached to sticks. That's correct. Yeah, and then when you go to the future, it's three seashells. Ah, ionic columns. Mm. Are these ones ionic? I don't remember. They're probably in the bit where Rome was, the where Caesar was. Why is like styles of columns so much a part of like education about ancient Greek and Greece and Rome? Um, <laughs> I would blame the classicists of the mm. like the neoclassical period who were super into architecture like unbelievably into architecture so these look like corinthian columns mm. with the old curlicues no columns down here this one mm. this one is ionic super deducing pilot that column with the marble horns is 100 percent ionic talk about ironic <laughs> all right <laughs> go away guy <laughs> Let's get a new we friend. The case and captured the diabolical Dr. Beljar. I like how he's wearing lots of watches. Tough luck, Beljar. Oh. Your formula for fiendishness has failed. You're due for a long tune-up in the Acme jail. You <laughs> talk about it, right? But Carmen won't leave me short-circuited for long. <laughs> I guess all the good Way guys go, will have listings on MDB as well. You busted a beastly jar, found the forum, and restored the history of civil engineering. Thanks to you, Rome's sewer system is in top working order, and because of that, we all have indoor plumbing today. I mean, no. 
For that, you deserve recognition. Mm. I'm promoting you to Time Scout. Ooh, now you've got something to scout about. There's a whole new case just up ahead. Can you take it on right now? Yes. Absolutely. Where Click. are we heading to now? Well, it's um, it's all linear time, so some more time after 50 BC. 11th century. 11th Your century, that's a Henry. big skip. You know it as North America, but no one will oh. call it that for another 500 years. Leif Erikson. We're getting into the American Whoa. content early. Leif Erikson. Now, yeah. 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 Cool. yeah. Yeah. Find out what's holding them up. I'm sending Rock Solid to be your good guy. Rock's an expert explorer, and in the wilderness of Inland, that's just what you'll need. Too many things. Uh, Cynthia Marcucci played Antiquity. Good luck scouting, Time Scout. The list is so long. All right. So yeah, this is an American game. We're gonna go to America a lot of times. Landed in North America in 1002, but the Vikings should have sailed home. Who is this gentleman? We better find out what went So this is Rock Solid. A real lumberjack type. Oh. No! My ship! A scoundrel's run off with my poor ship! It's almost reached the horizon! By Thor's Leif Erikson. Armor, my ship has been pilfered! <laughs> I must summon my crew Why is he talking a like thing? a pirate? He's played by Doug Boyd. Yeah. A thing is an assembly of Norsemen gathered to make uh -huh, an important outing. group decision. This democratic yes. practice was brought from Iceland to Greenland by my father, Eric the Red. Mm -hmm. Leif yeah, I doubt if I any like like father, Eric the Red. cultural character in this game is played by someone of the Leif same ethnicity <laughs> and cultural lucky, background. So we're just going to skip over that. Today. It is landsman, it is. Another Greenlander, Bjarni Haraldsson, passed these shores but never landed. That was an honor he left for me. And now I must return to Greenland. Why to spread tidings of my discovery to the Norse people? And after eight long months here, even a mighty explorer can get homesick. A thieving rogue took our ship. Without it, mm. we'll be marooned in Vinland forever. So this is the MacGuffin of this chapter, the mm. ship. Alas, no. But I did catch a whiff of something vile in the air. At least a ship is movable. I'll keep an eye on the ship <laughs> while you yeah, summon my crew. Designed for to a be thing. moved. Unlike the forum. With a fleet of twenty-five ships, my father or Eric the Red sailed the Book of the from Dead. Iceland to settle Greenland in nine eighty-five. What calendar did they use? Um they probably would have used one based on regnal years. Mm, yeah. They Come weren't on. Christianized. Of course. Everyone must Not contribute yet. their opinion before a decision is reached. Mm. There'd always be doubt if we left someone out. What about a quorum? No, that's not how a thing works. Hurry back! Remember, just talk to me if you need any help, partner. I don't. Good eye. It's a scrap of Carmen's note to her thief. Okay. Ooh, a sod house. Oh, we got a few screens here. <laughs> I, re I remember that animation. Hello there. I'm Turker the Southerner. I grew up in a country south of the Norse homeland. Oh, which country? I would eat for a grape and fell out of the tree. I couldn't Could be help anything. myself. The delicious grapes around here do not grow in chilly Greenland. Would they have had grapes there? In in America? Yeah. Sorry, that water is cold. I it's don't over know. my head and I can't Do not know the bread. origin of grapes. I believe I'll I mean, stay they right here and wait for come from Europe. Conditions. A silver nugget. The Vikings used silver and other precious metals for trading and metalwork. Yes. They had an ingot-based currency. Ooh. A shard of Carmen's card. Our thief can't be too far. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello again. Sorry, 
that water yeah. in. Those stones are really stepping out, aren't they? Yes. Walk on the stones. <laughs> Hello. Walk on the stones. Oh well, whatever. Maybe we need something else. Uh, ah, here. Thanks for dropping in. Oh wow! All right, let's go in the side house. Oh. Welcome, but stand back. This sword is white hot. I'm Ivor the Blacksmith. I make tools, weapons, and armor for the Norse community. <laughs> the accents. <laughs> Iron mostly. For a blacksmith, iron is as good as gold. I have silver. I'm heating a braid of iron in my forge. Then hammering Given it says that man is dressed like Link. It will be a beautiful this is um, Link in later life. <laughs> he went bald, <laughs> retired from adventuring, and became a blacksmith. That's a pretty common career path. I do appreciate that these Vikings slash Norse are actually dressed remotely appropriately. Mm. Not a horned helmet to be seen. No. I'm afraid I can't leave until I polished off. Yeah, so we gotta like solve the problems of all the different people so they can come to the thing. Nougat of pure silver. Nougat. Thank you. Now I can finish my sword. Yeah. I'm not sure you'd be baking a sword during an exploration. You wouldn't have a blacksmith for repairs, but you're not going to be taking a bunch of, like, raw materials, would you? The blacksmith was played by Jarian Munro, who mm -hmm. has a picture on IMDb, so he's probably more famous. He's one of the, like, few people who plays multiple roles. Because, mm. like, there's a ton of actors in here who are only playing one character, which is interesting. Mm. That's the last piece of Carmen's note. That's Normally you just got Lani Manella to do, like, 20 different voices, right? <laughs> okay. Now that the notes together, it's time to fire up the time cuffs for an arrest. You know what? You look suspicious. Time cuffs are ready and waiting. In I'm big, but not big enough for a thief to hide. That's behind. not what I was thinking, but okay. That's an ornamental necklace called Thor's hammer. Thor was one of the Viking gods, like Woden, Loki, and Frey. Some of the days of the week in our modern calendar are named after Norse gods. True. Some, but not all. Oh, more grapes. We need to you know, lure the guy with the grapes. We have named this country Finland because of all the grapes growing here. Oh. Nope. Good thinking, but those grapes are out the of reach. The animation. It's really good. I like the look at this game a lot. Hmm. Alright, um, I guess we'll go to the hilltop. Oh, another person. Even on a day like this, the weather in Greenland and Iceland is rarely this warm. No wonder the Vikings like to travel. Why, hello! Mm. Did I mention the pillaging? These tools, Cause I'm a chiseling fool. If I don't <laughs> flatten this stone, I can't carve my runes. Mm. I'm Olaf, the rune maker. I record the exploits of my fellow Norsemen and our characters gods. in this one. I'm trying to flatten this rock so I can carve some Norse mm, runes. Tell the food talk. All letters in the Norse alphabet are made up of straight lines so that they are easy to carve into stone. Sorry, like Ogham. Not until I flattened this rock. That's not as easy to carve into stone. You can only do it on a corner. Okay. Um. That tough old stump has quite a weight on its shoulders. I think we're going to get that boulder down there so we can climb it. You know, real Viking helmets didn't actually have horns. That's just a myth. Horns? Sick. On a helmet? Who starts these crazy rumors anyway? Yeah. And because we mentioned that to him, we've actually changed the timeline, so now historical Vikings will have horns. Oh, no. Um, hmm. What do we do? I'll catch you guys a rune. I mean around. Uh. Greetings again, a cowardly. My hardworking crew never. Hmm. Yeah. My hard. So we need the grapes Hurry to back. lower that guy back over. 
Let's and to get the grapes, we need to get the rock to come down. And to get the rock to Thanks. come down, we need a hammer or something. Is there something in the forge oh, we yeah. could pick up? Uh, Get a trag. Oh. Yes? No. Um. Vikings used long, sharp spears. That's a battle axe. A weapon. Aha, we uh -huh. mm. we'll get the axe. Oh, we could use the axe on our stump, I guess. Mm. I was thinking shovel for stump. Put your shoulder behind it and give that stump because a of animal solid crossing. stump. <laughs> I should have been thinking Stardew Valley where you hit the stump with the, the upgraded Ooh, axe. This boulder's broken flat. At last I can carve out my runes. Runes. Oh, that was quick. Mm. Runes often oh, they're so small. Details of Let us have a look at them. But these runes are more personal. They say, I, Olaf the rune maker, Defeated a mighty boulder here in 1002. Sure he did. <laughs> okay. A rock on a rock is grape just gut. what we needed. We've got the grapes. Let's head to the river. Yum, grapes, my favorite. What an appetite. I bet he'd jump at a chance for some more fresh grapes. Um. Can you hold them, like, over the... Oh, use... I remember this now. Oh, we have an infinite supply. Cool. Okay. Is that everyone to the thing? Might be. Welcome it's everyone to we've thing. met. We yeah, have a okay. decision to make. Shall we recover the stolen ship and return home, or instead accept where Thor's hammer has fallen and settle here in Vinland? Personally, I would like to return to Greenland with news of our discovery. I've had enough fighting and raiding. Vinland is pleasant mm, enough. The raiding. We Norsemen should strike fear into the hearts of our enemies. Let's reclaim our ship. Now that the choices are clear, let's vote and decide what to do. All who prefer to remain in Vinland, show your cowardly mitts. And let no one say this thing <laughs> is rigged. Now, all those noble souls who would prefer to reclaim our ship and return in glory to Greenland, please raise your loyal hands. Hmm. Well, it doesn't take the wisdom of Woden to see that a tie won't help us decide. Let us reconsider the issues at hand. I guess we have to convince them. Oh, it warms my Norse heart to no? see it. Um, Can we just use I the said, time cuffs on the ship? Cover our Norse ship and we should settle this new land oh, yeah. for future Maybe generations that's time of for Northmen, this. just as Eric the Red settled Greenland. We've been away from our families for eight long months. Let's recover our ship and return to Greenland. Let's stay. Remember, there aren't any grapes back in Greenland. Hmm. Mm, very simple. You think we should say something? Thoughts. Yes. What are you doing, landsmen? Let us Only change worthy history. Norsemen can vote in a oh. thing. True. But Leif, we are worthy Norsemen, uh, in spirit. Hmm, that's quite a claim. You must prove it. All Norsemen of worth know that we have named our days after the gods of Valhalla. Frey is the Norse god of sunshine and rain. What day comes before Frey's day? Oh no, I'll have to consult the encyclopedia to find out. Hmm... <laughs> I know. Oh, look, a map. Uh, oh, it wants me. As I do, we should be blitzed. What? But mm, that's called Frey. Um, we yes. say Thor's day. That's right. But you might have been lucky, like me. I'm going to pose you one more question. Tyr is the Norse god of law and justice. What day comes after Tears Day? Woden's Day. We say Woden's Day. Huzzah! Right again. You must be Norsemen after all. We'd be honored if you'd vote in the thing. Now that the choices are clear, let's vote and decide what to do. All who prefer to remain in Vinland, show your cowardly mitts. Now, all those noble... Well done. The issue is decided. Prepare Great. the landing boat for battle. I'm not sure they had a simple majority system in their things. Mm. But never mind. Ooh. Do we get another screen? 
Great yeah, we're on the boat job. Now. With our help, the Vikings have reclaimed their stolen ship. The Vikings I found the voice actor for Ivan Idea, Dan St. Paul. A Take a look at Carmen's note and remember the time cuffs. Hmm, yes, indeed. Uh, starboard. Just starboard? Yep. That's only one screen, so. Is this the prow? No, that's the 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 rudder. So that must be the stern. The stern. Oh, hang on. The steerboard. That's the steering board used by the helmsman on starboard. Maybe that's it. Of course, our thieving rascal is hiding okay. behind the steerboard to starboard. Must be a skinny fellow. Okay, called the Baron. Oh, okay. Come on, Baron. We've got a nice bear cell Aviator ready style. for you at Acme headquarters. You may have caught me, but you'll never wipe Hang on. away. We're imprisoning them at Acme headquarters. That sounds a little extrajudiciary to me. Good time, Scout. I must say, those Vikings have nothing on you in the toughness department. Thanks, Rock. Uh, <laughs> wow, Rock Solid made a live action appearance. How about that? Well, Rock Solid's hand did. Mm-hmm. Well, Time Scout, you're quite an opponent. You apprehended <gasps> the Baron, but there's no way you'll foil my it's next Brenda back as Carmen San Diego. It's already underway. Ta-ta. Sounds like the time crime wave is continuing. There's another history mystery to be solved straight ahead. Are you ready to take on the case? Whoop, whoop. Yeah, that's common herself. This tunnel only her. jumps ahead mm, and not yet. Gonna <laughs> do like 12 more cases from fast. The wilderness to high culture, the kingdom of Japan during the Heian oh. era. Okay. Ooh, cool. Shikifu should be writing the world's it's first, first novel, novel. Now, but her pages are blank go seek out the source of her writer's block mm, famous nice. women of history i'll be sending along acme's most artistically gifted good guide renee sans she has your time cuffs your new chronopedia chapter Sons. and all the culture you could ask for but Hope she is definitely not wearing a kimono scout. best of luck nope. Blending in is not the priority. She's Welcome wearing a very Hanai elegant Japan. matching hat. Though. It's nighttime in the year 1015. There's Murasaki Shikibu, who should be cooking up her famous novel, The Tale of Genji. But it looks like her creative sizzle has fizzled. My heart drifts aimlessly mm, like hours on a moonless night. I feel more sadness than I have for many seasons. What a syllabic slip up! The Tale of Genji is supposed to be the world's first novel. We better track down what I trouble think that's Murasaki true. and get her weaving it wondrous is true. words mm. again. Hello. I'd say I'm gladdened by your presence, if I was glad. If only I could work on my novel. My spirits flutter aimlessly like the last leaves of autumn. A thief has taken my book's first chapter, and with it, a piece of my soul. I can continue my novel no longer. Again, I'm trying to find voice actors. The face of the full moon answers my inner questions. Can you bring it here to my room? Oh, uh, yep. Perhaps if you, study if you can the move the forearm, you can move the moon. Eye, you'll find cause for reflection. A mirror. I was writing a novel. I'm gonna guess a pond. Tale of Genji. Is that a mirror on the desk? My novel is a long mm, romance maybe. about Prince Genji and his many adventures in Japanese court life. I believe it's a very important work. Ah, yes, so Murasaki Shikibu, played by Bonnie Akimoto. As a smooth lake captures the moonlight in its soft ripples, so I happily catch the moon in my mirror. But okay, the moon hides so me, the mirror is gonna stay there, I guess. Yep. Okay. Um. No, it's not a funny guitar. 
That's a Koto. Didn't say it I'll was. Bet Murasaki can play some mean riffs on it. I store my colorful kimonos back oh, there. Oh, I remember this puzzle. You may try them on if you'd like to fit in. It takes two to tango. We'll need a jacket and the perfect lining to go with it. Now, what should I choose? Oh, so it's on-site procurement of a uh, period mm. costume. Um, gee, I don't know. A Do you beautiful want... jacket. Now, hand me a colorful lining to go with it. There must be some kind of logic to this. I mean, there's two red ones and two orange ones. Ooh. Um, might have to move the other one back. This is the lining you are combining. Um, there you go. Oh, can you just wear What's any up, one? Scout? Oh. It's too dark to explore right now, but we might mm. see more. I need another lit torch. Should have brought My that one from Egypt. Dark well. Ah, the sky. What a perfect night for moonlighting. Oh yeah, I remember this. You gotta get mirrors in each of these houses. Mm. Hmm. This room makes me feel like hot stuff. They're all named after seasons. Because of course, Japan is the only country that has four seasons. Yes. Yep. This proud sword is part of the Imperial Regalia, handed down for centuries from one Japanese emperor to the Yada yada yada. Ooh, borrow the sword. Proper preparation. Yeah, okay. The way of That's the fair. sword trains the mind. <gasps> I curse on that kimono. Doesn't blend with my decor at all. I see. I need something rainy. Summary. Hello again. Perhaps because of my red hot disposition. Oh, or do you have to match you the guy? The heat, I don't remember there being a white one. Hmm. Think again. No touching that mirror. Why indeed? I do not warm to your chosen look. We Japanese insist on a proper match between our garments and the mood of the season. That garish outfit your friend wears doesn't fit my room at all. Stay cool. <coughs> This is the season to okay, turn over same guy, same outfit. Autumn. Yeah. So, like, the symbol on the back is going to match. But then how do you pick the lining is what I'm wondering. So, sun or lilies? Uh, sun? Ugh. You gotta put it on her, not on the... Smart and sassy, okay. and just my size. Or do you just pick the one above it? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Let's try hey, that. that's hot. But, will it start a trend? Hello again. Ah, that kimono halfway fits the bill. But it needs a little tuning, still. How so? <laughs> the wallpaper? I don't know. Uh, the mirror is cool. red. The mirror is always red. That's orange. Oh. So this place is making and me that's blue. Like Since I'm not sad, purple? I must be shivering. Hmm. I think it's the same. It's the same. Okay. I think. Well, then, how do we pick the lining? Duke. My heart is at. Hello again. Your visit warms the cool. We're close to Empress Shoshi's royal palace. I am her lady in waiting. For a funnier joke, perhaps? <laughs> a lady in waiting waits on the Empress. I bring her clothes in the morning, keep her company. That joke works in English. 
<laughs> Why are all the people speaking English? I'm trying a new literary style called a novel. It's, not it's because the TARDIS story. psychically translates I'm things to you. Into the lives of the characters mm, in question um, why they do brain. what they do. That's very The helpful. tale of Genji gets considered yep. the world's first novel. And it's it was invented story, by Common San Diego. Not an epic poem or historical writing, which were the norm in literature at the time. Okay. <laughs> so we're in the right robe. Yeah, so the symbol is good. Maybe red because of like he was a like on. If red I ever hot. get tired of acne to take work, I'll be a supermodel. I curse on that kimono. Doesn't blend with my decor at Blend with the decor, so maybe it is the wallpaper. That kind of teal color. Mm. I don't really get this puzzle. Oh, maybe look up the hints. <laughs> oh yeah. I curse on that kimono. Doesn't blend with my decor at Oh hang on, he's saying it doesn't blend at all, but look, previously he was saying it's halfway there. Yeah, so we must have had the lining right in the my outside. Is it right. So he doesn't want the sun. He wants that lily to match the screen. Yeah. What did we have? Hey, Orange? That's hot. Yeah. I think it was orange. This is case number three, Captain. We're in Heian period Japan. Is it three or four? Four. It's case four, Captain. Mm. Internally, it's case five because case two was cut. To choose the correct line, listen to Murasaki's poem. Oh, listen to the poem. Kimono, compare the picture on each kimono with the picture in each guard's room. So the lilies must be right. We've got the lining wrong, though. I knew there must be another clue somewhere. Check this out. We're in Japan, but these scrolls were written in Japan. Yeah, you missed um, Leif Erikson in Vinland. It is difficult to believe. But Japanese women are not allowed to read and write in Chinese. I have to hide those scrolls or they'll mm. discover my secret talents. Secrets. These poems here seem to be written about the Japanese seasons. Mirasaki, can you read a few? Her Japanese pronunciation is very good. Okay. Ring softly fingers are bright summer kimonos wrapped over yellow. Mm. Yellow. It's a haiku, and it is a haiku because it mentions seasons, seasons. and nature. <laughs> but does it have the cutting? Oh, maybe not. Also, it's not in Japanese. True. Bravo! Those hot threads set this place on fire. Stay cool. It's a light redirection puzzle. I played Ocarina of Time. I know all about this. <laughs> Okay, moon rabbit, maple trees. So wrong. Don't fall out of touch. I'll fall. I get it, but it's all of them. My quill quivers, but not. You're a suck. My pleasure. Tell me about autumn. Well. The harvest moon's hearth warms our autumn kimonos, splendid over green. Mm-hmm. Now I understand. It. But. Does it match my eye? I don't know. They're too low res to check. <laughs> hey, that's hot. What an eyeful. Your kimono colors seem most suitable for my room. So wrong. Don't. Okay, crane. Cranes like to spend the winter in Japan. The weather here fits the bill. Stay warm. Is that a bird pun? Okay, crane. Now we need the lining. My quill quiver. Mirasaki. My pleasure. Beneath Mount Fuji, our winter kimonos drift over brilliant red. Smart and sassy. No. 
nice outfit you have there. A stylish match for my cool room. How come all these guys don't match their rooms? They're all wearing the same thing. Alright. Cherry blossoms. Sakura. And spring. My quill quivers. Mirror snipe pleasure. Paddling our frail boats. We drape our spring kimono gently over blue. If I ever get tired of My she hasn't changed her hat to match there. <laughs> okay. Beautiful! Your fine kimono flourishes here, like the first buzz of spring. So we haven't got any notes yet. Maybe when the bush warbler appears under this boat, the Japanese know that spring's about to begin, just like the robin in America. Just like I don't know, the cockatoos, they just yell all the time. Night's return, and with it, my joy, I can write again. Just part of our job to solve the writer's block. Ooh, what a little moonlight can do. This little moonbeam seems to have cast new light on the case. And indeed, new light on the wardrobe. Mm. What does this say? Saru. Tori. Are they different animals? For the different ears. Ah. Hitsuji. Was... Shape. Yeah. Uma. Uma. Cow. Cow. What's that? Me? Yeah. That's me. E. Mm. What is that? <laughs> A uh, very weird looking air. Ne. Ne. Ushi. Ushi. Tatsu. Tatsu. Ra. Tora. Oh, yeah, Tiger. Okay, I know some of these. Mm. <laughs> that C note means we're right on track. So, what's this puzzle? Those about? characters are hiragana, the letters yeah. that make up the Japanese written language. Mm. I think this writing says something about yes. an animal. It's, it's monkey. But what does. Oh, the thief's probably in one of these drawers. But I need to find the other notes to find out which one, I guess. Oh. This is no ordinary scrap. It's, it's a Carmen note, which puts us a It was hiding in plain sight among the other paper. <laughs> Now, what did the Japanese use for paper in the 11th century? Paper. Nice. Do come again. It's green tea. Note in the teapot. Delicious. No, maybe not. Matcha. Um, I'm not seeing any more notes. Stay. There's one on the moon. That full moon is nope. casting quite a moonbeam tonight. Out of this world. The two in Murasaki's house. Yeah, here we go. Perhaps one of those friendly guards has seen some. Oh yeah, we can talk to them, I guess. I eat thee for breakfast. But sadly, no one has stopped by for a meal. Okay. Do come again. What do you Why yes? And she stumbled over Ooh. my Kotatsu. And if hitting my heater wasn't enough, she also tossed this litter on the ground. High five. Time Let's crime is one thing, but litter. Mm. This person is a true villain. Short whiskers and a naked tail. A rat? Nezumi. With Carmen's note in one telltale piece. I don't even need to consult the encyclopedia for this. I do have to squint at the screen though. Ne nephanesomy? Alright, maybe I do have to look. Yeah. They put the year ne as the year of the rat rather than that. I see, I see. One. It is indeed. So the kanji for some reason is child. Um hmm. Don't really know animal kanji too much, but it might be like a like the horse one is year, thing. the ram one is next. Maybe monkey is inside. Rooster yeah. is north. No, west. Yeah, I don't know all of these kanji. But it might have multiple, multiple meanings. things, yeah. or like days of the week have, you know, kanji. Yeah, yeah. So the twelve year thing. 
not necessarily of the animal. Okay, it's kind of hard to aim this, but you're using your smarts now. The Carmen note tells us you made the right choice. Naturally, you smelled the game said I was smart. So Mediva's the last Mediva ever darkened these doorways. Who came up with the smarts? <laughs> It's back to Acme headquarters for you, Mediva, for a long spell in solitary. Don't think you'll keep spell. me under wraps She's for She's supposed to be a ages. witch. I've still got a few tricks up my sleeve. Huh. Sure. Terrific tracking time, Scout. The world's first novel is well on its way to publication. Thanks to you, Mediva's in a cell, and Murasaki is moonlighting her way into history. Because of you, the novel will become the world's favorite literary form. Readers mm. around the world, thank you. Thank you, Given. Thank you. You're doing excellent work. This is a very great man view of history. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be hard to avoid that kind of thing. Meeting historical figures, and then you can only draw so many of them, you know. It's all about that simplifying and streamlining. Yeah, but, but you gotta wonder if that aspect of education is what feeds into great men and people century. carrying that on. By now, William the yeah, should be done but I think this is making it worse in mm. that it's but being like, oh look, now you've fixed this amazing. thing and mm. now novels will continue on plumbing, like mm. as if the first novel is responsible for the popularization of the novel mm. like the popularization of the novel in the west has almost nothing to do with novels in japan mm. they developed independently very good point and our modern plumbing has zero to do with roman plumbing we rediscovered the whole thing basically <laughs> By William the Conqueror. Oh no. <laughs> Stand further away, he's probably got the shits. <laughs> oh sorry, is this family friendly? It's yeah. supposed to be. I mean literally, he had a lot of diarrhea. <laughs> I wonder if they're gonna cover that. <laughs> probably not. They've got him in a siege, which uh, I guess he would have done in France. Ah, now this is another thing mentioned on the Wikipedia article. Mm. So the siege in this case was actually caused by the intervention of the bad guy, right? Oh. Um, okay, I'm quoting now from Wikipedia. The siege in case five is entirely fictional and is a direct result of Carmen's crook stealing the Domesday book, resulting in a perceived weakness in William's leadership and a rebellion to overthrow him. This is an example of... Uh, historical accuracy being sidestepped in favor of ease of gameplay, creating fun puzzles, and increasing visual clarity. End quote. Mm. Hail, friends. At least I hope you are friends. Those Saxons always seem to be knocking at my gates. I am William the Conqueror, Duke of Normandy. So you know a lot about British history. Yeah. Although those Saxons seem to disagree with that last part. Yeah, they sure do. Mm. Although I am from Normandy, I had a legitimate claim to the English throne. Oh, so I certainly I believed you did. <laughs> I conquered my rival, Harold, at the Battle of Hastings. I mean, you killed him. As king, but he wasn't the I only created the feudal society mm. where peasants work for lords. He created the feudal society. And barons work for um, me. It's good to be the king. He certainly made England more feudal. Oh, the Saxons are revolting. Again, <laughs> someone stole my doomsday book. And the Saxons, taking it as a sign of weakness, have decided to try and overthrow my castle with a siege. The doomsday book. They almost certainly the wouldn't have gone with the siege. In um, <laughs> from the at the time, the Norman fortifications noble. were basically the best known, and it was <laughs> nearly impossible to defeat a siege by battle like this. Mm. Um, you could starve people out, but that obviously takes a lot of troops to like isolate the tower. Now, mm, William did face a lot of rebellions in England. And those were mostly done as guerrilla 
campaigns. So there's a really famous one where... Robin Hood. No. (laughs) Uh, Robin Hood's much later. There's a bunch of people basically living in a marsh and uh, William can't get to them because Mm. um, they're in the marsh and he can't get his heavy cavalry Mm. through that kind of environment, whereas they can sneak out and hit him. And it's like that area is then so large that it's almost impossible um, for William, who does have a big siege-sized army, to lay siege to them. And in the end... um, he doesn't actually like defeat them by siege. He defeats them by um, basically getting them to betray themselves. Um, he bribes one of them. Um, mm. But in the meantime, he attempts to build bridges out of corpses and stuff. Oh, God. So yeah. Perhaps they need a bath. Bit of first world war the vibes. The Saxons are not happy having a born <laughs> king like me. Putting I much of the North Country to the, the dead bodies on the barbed wire to climb over in the trenches. Oh, yeah. You know, historical figures aren't always angels, but our acne job is to put history back on track. If yeah, William, William was king, definitely not an angel. He was William the Bastard. Mm. But not in the parentage sense. Oh, definitely in the parentage oh, sense. okay. <laughs> With this siege going on outside, I'm having trouble. That's why his name was the bastard. He was literally oh, okay. the ah, illegitimate child of his father. Offer. I, I thought we were using a modern out of this uh, Squeeze no. and go find my barons and lords. Tell them. So they're talking about starting now with the siege. But we do have a secret exit. It's a kind of note. Our thief must have slipped through this secret passage. My archers shoot arrows through the crenels, those gaps in the parapet mm, wall. Architecture they fixation. Try to break their Saxon yeah. targets without getting nicked in return. I'm not sure if they would have had crenellation at the time. Um. That port is full of boiling water, which we pour oh. down on enemies trying to climb the walls. It leaves them boiling Wait. mad. You're going to kill someone on screen? No. I guess he's okay. They would not have worn uniforms. Hurry back. <laughs> uh. Hello. Welcome to my castle. Okay. Certainly. I am Baron Dupont, a peer without peer. I am also the ruler of this castle. Through talent and wisdom, of course. Oh, yeah. And I support <laughs> the Conqueror when he oh, yeah, and sure. William gave most of the baronships to other French Normans like myself. Correct. Mm. And they all deserved it. Oh, it can be quite tiresome. These Saxons don't like having a foreign baron ruling them. To prevent them from rebelling, I must keep them very busy. Oh, God. This is grim. I make sure they're always doing their specific jobs. Knowing their last names helps a lot. And this is the no. reason for the, su- the census, right? That's what they're setting up in this. Oh, well, people didn't get last names really until after oh, the Black Death. That's good. So. Help you? <laughs> but I am a nobleman. It is very uncommon for me to help commoners. For the king? Why didn't you say so? In that case... Helping you would be my crowning glory. What can I do to help? I know little of petty activities like making bread. Here's a list of my subjects. Perhaps one of them can help you. So was the Doomsday Book the first census? No. That's Lacey, my hunting dog. Just part of the pack I take on my afternoon hunts. I do the catching. She does the fetching. I mean, maybe... What? We shouldn't wander the countryside till we know where we're going. Oh, you want me to interact with that the de- thing? Certainly oh, they're going to come here. Pes- okay, that makes sense. That makes it easier. Salutations, dear Barry. <laughs> May I help you? Cockney, really Cockney, I'm a Cockney. Can you help? I would love to bake you some bread, but I am flourless and thus powerless. Do you have any flour? Hmm, no flour. Well, check with the Lord down the road. As I am a baron, and he is only a lord. 
The feudal system requires that he help me out. When was the Magna Carta? Much later. Hmm. So you want bad I'm King John. The Lord. Hmm. That peasant is being punished for stealing a chicken. He must spend one full day locked in the stockades while people toss rotten vegetables at him. Bummer. Must be humiliating. I don't especially know. Especially if they use broccoli. Yuck. And it would have been later. Um, Welcome to my estate, travelers. I was going to say about the Doomsday Book. So the Doomsday Book is a document drawn up. It's not a single document, it's multiple documents. Because exactly. um, it's massive. Uh, and it was drawn up in part to help with he the legal and taxation system. And I pass the so, on to my um, it's the feudal way, you know. In order to know how much something oh, is taxed, you have to know how I much land it is. Like, how much land it is, how productive it is, therefore how much tax That's you can nonsense. charge on it. The oh, other reason no is that um, ownership was well, not really. treated Most differently between was meant to me by Baron um, people who turn, owned stuff and had owned it before the conquest the and people who'd the been would call assigned lands villains. after the conquest. Um, well, it works you like kind this. of ran under I English law if you continued to own land. Um, give me part of the so it's really important to know who land. owns what Such in are the that ways case. Of the feudal um, system. So that's why you get the Doomsday Book. But I think it was completed after William well, died. I'm happy mm. to help, and it, yeah, definitely not In one fact, book. It is Maybe this is first draft. Duty. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, there was I a first draft. Any flower mm. on me at the moment, but one of my peasants may be able to help. Just point one out. Okay, who's gonna give us flower? Miller. Lordy this Lord, guy looks a lot day. like the last guy. What can I do for you? <laughs> the Baron needs flour to bake bread. Can you help? Yes, I can make some flour for you. I am a miller, after all. So they have last names that match their occupations. There it is. This was the style of the uh, after the Black oh, Death. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if we can call Greetings anyone else once in. Again, travelers. Oh, never mind. Alrighty then, let's head back to Baron Dupont. Oh, this flower is perfect. I'll see what I can bake up. Hold on. So you do get surnames before the Black Death. Um, so you might get occupational surnames, but again, it's going to be so and so the Miller. Um, Salutations once again. And then you get nobles having. Names, as in just Brad, I guess. Place they right. own. Let's sneak past the siege and back into William's castle. Yeah, oh, one dynasties. loaf of bread. Mm, fresh bread. Bizarre. I mean, fresh bread is very good. And it is, <laughs> but how many troops does he have? We need more weapons. Could you stop by the Baron's place and guess see it's if he has any swords? Absolutely. Happy to help your kingship. How are we escaping the sage? Secret tunnel. Oh, okay. Secret tunnel through the mountain. One of my subjects might give you the edge you need. With whom do you care to speak? I'm gonna call on. Hello, my baron. Yeah, that's right. May I be of service? So they're gonna have unique sprites for everyone. Can you make them? I'm afraid I don't deal in swords. They might cut the many threads on my loom. Well, Damn looms. thank you anyway. Yes. Good day. Okay. In 11th century England, castles had to be built fast. Oh, did so I they click were usually the made of okay. wood instead of heavy mm. stone. A wood castle could be finished wow, in just three that's weeks. Speedy. Mm -hmm. so well, you make it out of wood and dirt. Because mm. you want to build up the hill. Motten Bailey. The mm. With whom do you care to speak? Okay, swords, smith. How do you do, Mr. B? What do you need? King William is calling for Mr. more B. swords. <laughs> Can you make them? Oh, I'd dearly love to forge some swords, but the water barrel I use to cool my red hot metals oh, no. has sprung a leak. If you can find me a new barrel, barrel, I can forge ahead. You need a barrel? I believe the Lord next door can roll one out for you. Greetings once again, travelers. And who makes barrels? Ah, no, you've got me over a barrel on that one. 
Let's check with one of my peasants. I wonder if there's stuff in the encyclopedia that helps with that. Hmm, the bigger tapestry. Which is not a tapestry, it's an embroidery. Hmm. We'll unlearn it. Ooh. Manganel, I remember that term from Age of Empires. Mm. Another game that is good about historical accuracy and has an in-game encyclopedia. <laughs> um, so there's not much there to help with, like, matching these to Oh, jobs. you want Cooper. I, I, I know that. I'm just oh, thinking okay. in terms of, like, a child who doesn't know that. Might have to be a bit of trial and error or something. Well, oh, they could Lord. use a dictionary, May I suppose. I be service? The Baron wants a barrel. Can you help? A barrel? I'm happy to make you a barrel. Back in a flash. Ta-da! The finest barrel a Baron could ask for. It won't leak a drop. It's like a northern accent. Everyone's got a different accent. Yeah, it was... It sounded like Yorkshire to me. Ah, uh, now that's a fine watertight barrel. I'll fill it with water and make some swords in no time. What was that? <laughs> that was a bit all over the place. Yeah. There you go. The finest swords in England. A real cut <laughs> above quick. the ordinary. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. That was very fast. See, one loaf of bread, but like ten swords. Hello again. Have also, some swords. Uh, I don't want to be picky, but swords in a siege probably not very useful. Or a good boot. <laughs> you know, for when they climb up on a ladder. My experience with sieges is mostly um, the Lord of the Rings Return of the King video game. Really good level, that one. Siege of Minas Tirith. One of my servants can surely have. Now, I know who Which makes arrows. It's Fletcher's. Mm. Good day to you all. <laughs> what is the Baron's bidding? King <laughs> Very posh. Needs more arrows. Like to take a shot at making them? Sorry, I'd make you the straightest arrows in England, but I'm a little light on feathers right now. Do you happen to have any? No feathers for mm, the arrows? Feathers. You might be able to pluck some from the lord down the road. By feudal law, he is obligated to help. So he's obligated, but would he be compensated? No. Oh god. Greetings once but again, travelers. It's like... I'm a lord, not a lark. But one of my subjects might be able you... to help. Who should I call? I mean, you wouldn't... It's not like this. <laughs> um... Well, no. Like, you would have My certain obligations. They would be written down. Do uh, and there would be that things like exactly. providing a certain amount of this per year. Mm. Um, or being able to call up a certain number of people to fight. Um, so it's like taxes in a way. Yeah. I hope the feathers help. Silverific! You scored a shred of the Carmen note. Hmm. These feathers were plucked from the wild birds that the hunter caught. And they sounded like they were still alive. <laughs> still well, missing look at a all note. these feathers. Just what a Fletcher needs. They'll It'll make my up, arrows fly sure. straight and true. <laughs> Here you are. I guess the sound these of arrows. Are of Four feathers. arrows, perfect. Just what we needed. <laughs> Once I pass out these fine arrows, my men will easily repulse the Saxon siege. Victory is certain! <laughs> How about joining me in a celebration feast? Well, I'm not sure, Your Kingness. Come on, you can do a cheek with my dancing bear. A dancing bear? Fantabulous! Tell me we get to see this bear. Oh, yep, poor thing. The trick, that's not what I was expecting. Oh, it just reminded me of animal cruelty. I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, I know. Yeah. What, what was I thinking? <laughs> They've got the bear tapestry just hanging off us. <laughs> like a garland. <laughs> this is the bear tapestry. Yeah, I don't think it would. Um, 
In a way, it means I don't think the it would have hung wall. up in King William's castle because it, it's not actually that complimentary to William. <laughs> um, that's why they don't think it was commissioned for him. Um, one of the bishops is the guy who they think did it. Can we free the bear? No, oh, no. Superific! The final moat of the carbon. Superific. Okay. The thief is in the Bayo tapestry. Hold on. I'm activating the time cups. Can you pat the dog? Dogs often roam the banquet Can't. hall sniffing out table scraps. Their thick fur can make for a handy napkin, you know. Gross, dude. Um, well, are we done here? I think so. Okay. Good thinking. The Bayou Tapestry is a story banner telling how King William conquered England. Hmm. Not really. Did you mention the preconception about Harold? We've oh, the, the bear! That the bear got free! Wonder. Look! Oh. Run away, bear! <gasps> is it coming through the time portal with us? No, it's not. No, it's too bad. There's this idea that Harold got shot in the eye with an arrow because that scene is near where it says how Harold died on the tapestry. Mm. But now they think that the caption is actually referring to some guy who's getting trampled by a horse. Because the king is not clearly distinguished visually, so um, he probably did not get shot in the eye. And also that arrow was probably added in the Victorian period. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, that's part of a restoration. That's, that's overstepping the bounds of a restoration. <laughs> Wait. We could what happened? Where another case is waiting. What do you say? What's wrong? Oh, it's stuck. Our view of the strain is stuck. The OBS is fine. Let's refresh is it this. Just we went. Go on. Go on. Okay. Okay. Oh, that was worrying. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it was fine for everyone. I think so. You're tunneling to the 13th century. Sorry. China's Yuan Dynasty our is view of the stream young, got but an messed up. Link between East and West is Seems to be all good now. Yep. The problem, time trooper. So... We continue into Yuan, China. Getting a repeat of a, a helper. So there's a China section on Wikipedia about critical reception. So where you're walking to. A review in the Sydney Morning Herald noted that Asian and Australian history is all but neglected. Uh, but this is the second we made it case so far that's in, in Asia. It's my be the last one, honestly. Mm. But this year marks the start of the Yuan they at least dynasty. And the reign of Kublai Khan. Two in look, Asia. There's the wise Khan right over there. The Khan is not pleased. I was looking forward to a visit from the Polos, and now this. Say, the Khan looks pretty put out after scanning that scroll. Wait, this is. Oh, this is Kublai Khan. Okay, interesting. The Polos have fallen victim to a thief on the Silk Road. Even worse, without the oils they hope to bring, the Polos have headed back for Europe. Mm, Marco Polo. I am Kublai Khan, ruler of the Why Mongols is he saying multiple and Polos? of the Chinese Sun oh, Dynasty. It's a family. Only oh, okay. a few rebels in the south still defy the power of my mighty. <laughs> Are we going to Xanadu? Xanadu. Xanadu. From the northern heights. Xanadu did Kublai Khan. Stately pleasure dome decree. decree. I don't know any more words from that. Poem. No. I did study it. Yeah. My and it was, and it was bad. His Khan was a Mongol warlord who overran the Great Wall. Ruthlessly conquering northern China and ferociously battling to the Did he say Genghis or Genghis? My rule, fortunately, has I think been he a said Genghis. I think he did. Mm. My foreign friends, the How Polos, were bringing you precious eat? oils from their distant <laughs> homeland. But a dishonorable thief has stolen this gift. The Polos are merchants from a place called Italy. I was thinking of there's the a joke in The Simpsons where Lisa goes into like an educational VR game and Genghis Khan is there and he's like, you will 
follow me on my uh, exploits. You will despoil what I despoil, and, <laughs> and you'll eat who I eat. <laughs> To speed your travels, I grant you full Kim and says the historical Xanadu was Kublai's Kublai summer palace, which, which Marco Polo visited while he was traveling. Mm. Well, maybe. We'll see what other screens we get access to when we get through this stuff. Surely you know of the Silk Road. It I do, actually. It's the place on the internet where you can get illegal things. <laughs> what is not? Porcelain, silk, even the paper money my people make here in Kanbali. Indeed we do. So who invented Our paper, money? paper money? is made from the bark of mulberry trees. I mean, like the, the Chinese had it now. first. Mm. It depends what you define as money, Indeed. right? Mm. Do you Black consider a note saying I owe you five dollars money? Because <laughs> that's what it is. That's a fiat currency. Oh no, we're dropping frames. Oh. Come, come, yeah, okay. so the Khan's cat must be braver. Oh. That Khan's <laughs> got one cool cat. The Mongols often used cats and birds when hunting. Okay, it's back. The thing went green. Mm. Can I steal them? Yeah, let's go. So we can go over here. Oh, wait. Kanbalik. Over there is Kanbalik. The Khan's capital. Okay, so we're probably paper money. not near Xanadu. In our time, it's called Beijing. Oh, Beijing. Okay. Interesting. Oh, wow. We just went a long way. <laughs> okay. Mm. The first compasses were made by floating a spoon in a bowl of liquid. What? The spoon was made from a magnetic oh, okay. metal called a lodestone, which always spins to point north. I wish my hands were not so hole. idle for lack of silk. I'd rather be spinning silk um, than sipping soup. Good question, Gibbon. It was called... See... I don't remember. Let's see if I can find that map again. Huh. Oh, that's not the map I saw on the travel screen, but... Uh... Kanbalik. Oh, Shangdu is the... Oh, it's proper romanization of Xanadu. So I, I don't think that was it. Hold on, Kambalik is where I was. Let me just check. Xinyang Fu and Sachao is over there. The first compass is. Hello again, travelers. So not quite. Greetings. I am Sun Hu. One of many silk weavers here in Xiangfu. Xiangfu, okay. Silk weaving and art. Strangers, Xiangfu is a most famous city. If you want the finest silk, there is no. Yeah, the map screen disappears right quick. Hard to read it. <laughs> ah, stream got stuck again. I think it's okay on the other end there. Maybe when you had that lag spike, it just stopped. they have nothing to eat. Yeah, there's no controls there. It's so annoying. Silkworms are I think it's okay. Eaters, and will feast only on the leaves of the mulberry tree. I, I make cannot. them look almost cute. My mulberry tree is <laughs> all out of leaves. <laughs> worms are starving. Am I gonna get them some mulberry leaves? I yeah. would like to eat my soup, but this spoon has a mind of its own. Scholars tell me it detects. The Magnus is not energy. that powerful. Come on. All I know is that each time I set it down, the spoon spins and points in the same direction. I would gladly give it away. But this is my okay, we need to spoon. find mulberry leaves and a replacement spoon. I got them from a trader near Sacha. I hope I didn't make a foolish trade. Okay. Farewell. Pleasant journey. <laughs> How long are we spending here? Hey ya, okay. hey ya, barter and trade with me. I got wagon loads of fabulous goods. So the Silk Road was less of a single road and mm. a series of different connected roads. A merchant who travels the Silk Road. The Silk Road stretches countless miles. Goods pass from merchant to merchant, making their way from east to the distant west. Though I myself have traveled only as far as the nearby desert. I could be convinced to part with oh, certain items. 
to shut all the doors and windows because mm. of machines outside making noise. It's also pretty warm today. today. Yeah. I can Should I anywhere from close up and put the air on? Mm, maybe. Okay. Okay. Um, give me a moment. This pottery is wonderfully delicate and as thin as paper. You won't find work this fine anywhere else in the world. For the secret of making porcelain is known only to us, the Chinese. Oh. I wonder if that's true. I'll never know. Um, spoon. This pottery is no spoon. I can't click on a spoon. Only a bowl. Come trade. Uh, what if I do this? Use fire crackers on porcelain. Bowl could hold other kinds of crackers, but not. Okay, okay. No, thank you. I would prefer some. Well, it's valuable, surely. All right, we're going down the Silk Road. Gonna end up in Eastern Europe. Okay. Take note. That C note means we're hot on the paper trail of our perpetrator. Oh snap! Samuel Taylor Coleridge, quoted by Carmen Sandiego. She's. She's a well-read woman, I guess. Oh, is that the Great Wall in the background there? Or just like a road? Lost. We need some device to find our way through oh, if only we had a device that could tell us directions. I wish I knew how to get such a thing. Silk is produced by Silkworm. Okay. So we have firecrackers. Don't know what to do with them. Can we give them to the trader? He didn't want them. Oh. He was a snob. The great can we take the, 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 the cat? Although I'd hoped my trade next the cat? Oh, that's the Khan's cat. Oh. We can't just take it. Um, but we know it scared the cat. So there might be an interaction with the silkworms. Stop! Smuggling Ooh. silkworms out of China mm. is punishable by death. And scaring them also is not permitted. <laughs> uh okay. Come trade. I'm afraid I have never crossed that desert myself. Yeah, I know. However, I hear that a lodestone can be most Okay, well now we've learned that in the game. So Hello. The great con. Oh, poor kitty. Come, come, mm. so First, investigate the, the merchant's motives and figure out motives. what he most desires. It will make for a smooth trade. Yeah. Good old hints in the manual. Come to of course. What can I could be convinced to part with silk. I have a passion for silk. I yeah, can okay. All right. Oh, hang on a second. I think the Khan was sitting under a mulberry tree. Ah, so you can get some leaves off his tree. Here we go. You just grab one. I didn't think you were trying to. Then you feed the worms, the worms make silk. The worms don't, definitely don't die as part of that process. <laughs> and you, then you the kindness. hard worker spins the silk into the silk. fabric. And we use that to acquire a spoon. Fine silk. In return, I shall give you this porcelain bowl. And to prove my generosity, oh, I guess we need the bowl, so I'll I'll add the spoon for free. Safe travels, my friend. Many thanks for the new bowl. Let me give you this bowl and spinning spoon in return. Okay. Farewell. 
And with a makeshift compass, we can find our way through the desert. That's using your head. This compass will point us in the right direction. Hmm. Feel like we might need one. <laughs> nope. Crew, oh, another kitty. Your soup bowl guidance really helped us cook through that desert. And say we're not alone. I do believe we've found Marco Polo and his party. I've joined my father Nicolo and Uncle Maffeo on their second visit to the Khan. But without our oils, our caravan will have to turn back. Oh. Buongiorno. Have you any <laughs> oil? Ours was stolen. I am Marco Polo, the son of a merchant. And I have come here from the faraway European land called Italy. Never heard of it. Italy Neither is, is quite he. far away. <laughs> and the whole world That's away true. It was all city states at this time, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Much to learn about China Italy didn't and exist. Where was he from specifically? To to the Khan was a hmm. I don't know what city he's from. Garments, who looked neither European nor Chinese. Hmm. The oil thief proved too slippery to catch, but I'm so sure he's around the here somewhere. <laughs> yes, very good. But the important item stolen from this period of history is oil. Yeah. That's a MacGuffin. And already it's traveling is like, in my blood. I figure you could get that anyway, really. East with my father and uncle I mean, they don't specifically Nico. want this item, the do they? They want to, like, change history only I can by getting this item. Come. Yeah, but... Couldn't they source oil from somewhere else? I don't know. Anyway, the firecrackers had a reaction with the cat so earlier, long. so... Best of luck oh, was it bringing down that bandit. Hello. Yikes, that's a Siberian tiger, one of the largest cats in the world. I hope you're ready so to earn your though. stripes. Thought Siberian tigers were white. Hmm. They definitely don't nice wet on the job, trooper. <laughs> you really made that tiger turn tail. Cartoon mm. logic. Looks mm. like someone's been digging up coal out of this sooty old mine. Okay. Can we take the coal? Hmm. These look just like coal. Uh. I wonder who's having the barbecue. Hmm. Um. Mm. Maybe Marco Polo will be interested in the cave. Greetings once again. No. <laughs> we talk to the caravan. I've joined my father nope. Nicolo and. Mm. So Put bowl in cave. That's an attractive choice, but. Um. What? <laughs> How can I help? Tell me what to do. Marco Polo thinks the thief is hiding somewhere near. Yeah, no kidding. Well, we found the polos, but oh. not all of Carmen's oh. notes. Use cuffs on cave, Every I guess. To yeah. Gotta go note hunting. Uh, there. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Arrivederci. Oh, it was behind There's the bowl. A Carmen note. Mm. Safe trap. Is that one of the silk weavers? Oh, on the tree. Oh, I thought it was a worm. It Same. looks a lot like the worms. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now that the C note's complete. <laughs> I'm gonna use the bowl. Oh. That's he doesn't just remember the right way. By the way, I like the stylization of the sun. Hmm. It's just. Uh. Oh. I got lost. <sighs> Sorry. So long. Just part of the art style of this game. Um, I think it's cool. Yeah. All right. right. Cool. The lair of the black stone must be a Chinese coal mine. 
Let's go, Jekyll and Hyde. <laughs> My dear Acne friends, I know you're only doing your jobs. But you won't keep me locked up for long, losers. Mm. Mm. You don't get much Excellent of the villains. Work. No. Outside That's of those little scenes. I guess Kale you might Jacqueline maybe get more of them in the cartoons or something. Too. Well, I know they show up again. I don't know how long we're going to keep playing today, but... Bust. There's this, when you get halfway through the game, maybe when you get to the change disc point, you've locked up all the crims, but then, oh no, Carmen comes back and frees them all, and then you have to catch them all again. That's why there's like 19, there's 18, you know, main cases and nine villains, I guess. So you do them all twice. Speaking of that, how long do you want to keep going? One more case? Yeah, we can see what... Um, case oh, oh, that's interesting. Oh, case seven. Yeah. Musa. Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa, yeah. This time tunnel leads to Western Africa in the 14th century. Nice. Yeah. It's the height of the Mali Empire and a pivotal pilgrimage should have hit the road by now. The problem is <laughs> no one's going anywhere. See what you can Mansa find Mansa Musa better get on. If He's got some back. economies to destroy. Antiquity. <laughs> She's going with you. So look to her for guidance, time cuffs, and another Chronopedia chapter. Better dress for warm weather, time trooper. Good luck. She says that, but antiquity's not going to change. Again, we just wear whatever. Another day, another time period. How's this? So for casual heat? about it. Jeez. Welcome to sunny West Africa in the year 1324. We're just outside the city of Niani, and the fabulous looking fellow there is Mansa Musa, emperor of the Mali Empire. Well, now, probably the world's the richest that ever the camel's back. Wow. A man most strange just stole my only block of salt. My pilgrimage cannot begin without it. Aha. Sounds like our thief needs to cut down on his salt intake. That griot is an oral storyteller who memorizes mm -hmm. all the important cool. events of the Mali Empire. He's a walking, talking history book. My griot excels in the telling of stories about amazing African empires like mine. Griot, tell us a story. One tale of the great Mansa's pilgrimage coming up. <laughs> It was in 1324 that Musa left the Niger shore for Mecca, that most holy <laughs> That's Muslim the pilgrimage. city. Yes. This pilgrimage, it's called a Hajj, is something Muslims never dodge. To miss the trip would be a golden pity. Nice. Sand blast it. Okay. A pretty character just absconded with all the salt, my most precious possession. Without that salt, we're going nowhere. I am Mansa Musa, ruler of the great Mali Empire here in Western Africa. Surely you've heard Yes, of I have. I have. Mansa because I listened to the podcast, you're dead to me. And my own name is Musa. <laughs> they covered so I am Mansa called Musa, Mansa Musa, ruler of one of the largest empires in the world. Someone has stolen my caravan's only block of salt. If my followers hear of this, they'll surely disband. And do you have any idea how long it takes to get 60,000 people packed up and ready to go? People. Yeah. Salt is essential for the body. It helps us survive long trips through the desert by replacing the salty sweat lost to the hot sun. Water alone is not enough. We must have salt too. Why, yes. How gracious of you to offer. Take my gold staff and we have for the largest block preserved of salt food in using salt. The success of my pilgrimage yes. depends on I just on feel you. like it'll be more distributed than one block. Oh. Wow, that's generous. Why, we are in Western Africa, of course. And we are standing by the outskirts of Niani, capital of my Mali Empire. Fate has been most kind. The Mali Empire is one of the largest and richest empires anywhere. In other parts of the world right now, there is much bloodshed and poverty. But here in Mali, we have peace, high culture, and great wealth. 
<laughs> can't complain. Yemen says that she appreciates that they're visiting different parts of the world in addition to different time periods. Mm. Yeah, it is quite good about that so far. Um, when we're done with this, we'll just like sc scroll through the manual and tell you what the upcoming cases would have been and where, and where and when they are. Just to that get an idea of what caravan. the game covers. All the people, camels and supplies that will join me on my holy pilgrimage. If you want details, just ask my official Griot. He made all the arrangements. Oh, okay. Go on, Griot. Sing again for your supper. Ah, yes. Another caravan tale. <clears throat> One hundred sturdy camels bearing three hundred pounds of pure gold each. They'll cross the desert's blazing worst where salt alone can banish thirst. The sands of the Sahara are no day at the beach. <laughs> Nancy Musa is played by Lewis Sims. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Jungle or Timbuktu? Uh, jungle. Good day, and what a fine day it is in the Bright Country. The Bright Country was a common nickname for the Mali Empire. Think about it. The African sun, the plentiful gold, and the friendly reputation of the Mali people. Makes sense, no? Greetings, travelers. Have you come to peruse my crafts? Hmm, something about melting well, gold. Let's I remember see. this. Got my metal pot, my metal working tools, and I am surrounded by metal. I am in fact a metal worker. I specialize in handcrafted gold items. Why? Why, it's glittery. It's malleable. It's valuable. Mm, it easy produces to melt. awe inspiring, mm. jaw dropping jewelry. Iron and copper are important, but with gold, I can really work some magic. Very resistant to corrosion. Well, <laughs> let's just say I have a magical touch, but it really comes from years of dedication and hard work. Nothing up my golden sleeve, see? In ancient West Africa, people believed that smiths had magical powers because they could shape earth and fire oh, wow. into a new substance, metal. Did they believe that? Well, I haven't heard of that. I melt <laughs> soft metals like gold in that copper pot. That it is true of, of a um, candle flame. Then I pour the liquid into these like the ancient Near East, like the pre. The like and they think by hand. that's there's evidence of that in Proto-Indo-European and okay. in, um, no, no. Gold the never goes early bad. myths about do you think it is? stealing fire from the gold smith god. Gold can be melted god. and reshaped mm. endlessly. You might even own some gold once worn by an ancient pharaoh. Yeah, and we might have even got it straight from Queen Hatshepsut, huh, Trooper? Wink. What's in white gold? Gold is beautiful gold and useful and for many mm. crafts, so, so everyone mm. wants some. I think also something else. But gold is else. also quite hard to find. Put Palladium. these together, and you have yourself Rhodium. a truly precious that was it. metal. Yeah, the jeweler told me that's what gives it its color, I think. Otherwise it would be very pale. Definitely not. If you just mix gold and silver, you get a sort of wanted, green metal? I think it's really pretty, but then it's not very popular. As hmm. much. <laughs> Lucky for me, gold Whereas is rose quite gold rare. is mixed with copper. Mm. A lot of Mali's gold comes from the secret mines of Wangara. The miners keep the location of the mines a secret, so only they know where to find it. Can we give them the gold staff? Hold your camels! What are you trying to do? Get me in trouble? <laughs> I, I thought that might have go down well. I know Musa's property when I see it. This is his personal gold staff. I can't melt this down. There's no need to worry. We're on a mission from Musa. He gave us the staff so that we could obtain some salt for his journey. Well, that I don't is know what I'm going to do with it yet. Yeah. I think but you trade it with someone in Timbuktu. That Mansa Musa actually gave you his staff and that you didn't <laughs> borrow it. Fortunately, I am well acquainted Ooh, with wow, Musa's quiz. Privilege. Answer my questions about it and I'll melt the staff for you. Okay. So the the older Carmen San Diego okay. games are very heavily quiz-based, I feel. Arabic word but we've only had a, a couple in this Hajj. game. Yeah, we learned that from well the Greek. Well done! Hajj is the Arabic word for a holy pilgrimage. All good Muslims are expected to make this important journey at least once in their lifetime. 
Permit me to ask another question. It is interesting what to compare the them because, of Mansa Musa's pilgrimage? like the old games, Mecca. Um, that's correct. Mecca is the holy like, city of Islam. The educational content, I, away, I don't feel, is delivered very Muslims well. To mm. go there at least once and it's just like set dressing and like something pops up. Question. Then you answer a question pilgrimage, about it. How many Whereas this, with all the camel carry? the like the context of situating you there and like interacting with um wasn't it 300 pounds uh yes it was correct 300 pounds on each camel it's a real treasure trove and the Mansa will need yeah all i given saying the game show is very quiz based and the older and home computer games followed suit mm. according well, to I think the books, Mansa earliest Musa games predated so the show gold while traveling, there's a good defunct land Cairo. video that goes over various His iterations of the show oh that sounds interesting yeah, on we'll check that out. On the map. permit me to ask hmm. another question musa's journey will take him through an ocean of sand what is the name of this vast wasteland is that the sahara does it yes okay that's correct the mighty sahara takes up much of the north african continent it is not an easy task to cross it, but Mansa Musa is a devout and determined Muslim. Nothing will stop him. My doubts are dispelled. Did he go strangers. through the Sahara well rather than around it? <laughs> um, I would have assumed he'd Mansa gone around it via the north coast. But maybe he went through. I remember these gold bags. Oh, you are admiring my yeah. mask. It is one of my finest pieces and will bring me much respect in the village. Goodbye, traders! Okay. So now we trade the gold for salt in Timbuktu. See the 20-foot high walls behind me? They're the outer Near walls Timbuktu, of the fabled city of Timbuktu, mm. where the camel meets the canoe. Ah, yes. Very clever. Timbuktu is a splendid trading spot, centrally located between the camels I of the desert camel. and the canoes of the jungle rivers. <laughs> it is my favorite city in all of Mali. That camel has a pretty dry disposition. Too much time in the sun, I guess. My camel Camille may be ill-tempered, but she's a very shrewd merchant. She has a way <laughs> of letting me know if a trade is not in my favor. A Carmen note. So, okay. Hmm, yes. That salt probably came from the salt mines of Tagaza, up in the north. That's quite right. Up in Gaza, there are no trees, so buildings are made out of huge blocks of pure salt. Wow. Welcome, my <laughs> fine friends. Quite a claim. I am a humble Muslim and an honest salt trader at your service. By Allah, being Muslim means I am a devout follower of the teachings of Islam. Bismillah. Most of the traders around these parts are Muslim. Over the years, we have established huge trade networks across Africa and Arabia. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, well, hard work helps, of course, but it also helps that most traders are Muslim, and we Muslims tend to trust one another, even when separated by differences in language and culture. Common beliefs can make African and Arab traders act like brothers. Yeah. <laughs> I have a nice solid block of salt, fresh from the Takaza mines. Depends what period you're in. <laughs> Would I like to this trade? period, sure. I mm. thought you'd never ask. Make me an offer of gold. And we'll strike up a deal. Um, let's check this out. When are we at? 1324. Mm. Mm, there's no pilgrimage route. <laughs> All right. Um. Yes. So. Hello again, Str Well, I carry my salt by camel across the vast Sahara, all the way from the Tagaza mines in the north. Camels are amazingly efficient animals, quite well suited for desert travel. They can go for weeks without water. They also have wide, soft feet, perfect for walking on loose sand. Hmm. <laughs> is this a good trade? Oh, and that is how the camel wants the guy trade. know. Maybe we should add some gold to our side of the bargain. You know, da. 
You did gold first, apparently. Now, how do you figure out how much to give? As far as I'm concerned, we can give it all, right? Like, come on. Try one. Yes. Oh. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> okay. A thousand apologies. But your proposed trade is sadly lacking. We don't need the gold I for anything else, do we? The very short no? end of the stick. Let's add a little more gold. How am I supposed to know how much to use? Oh, there's a little delay, that's that's the problem. Before you can click the next one. Your display of wealth is flabbergasting. Okay. But I'm afraid I don't have enough salt to match your offer. I think Fair we enough. went overboard. Let's remove some gold. H how do I? A gold nugget for your thoughts. I we can balance things out by throwing some gold on one side of yes. the scale and salt on the other. This is how a scale works. Combinations, my dear trooper. We'll need the perfect oh, mix of the different Oh, there's a hint pieces. in our manual. Oh yeah. That the user wrote in all oh, the yeah. second smallest and largest. Yeah, so the manual scan we're looking at was owned by someone who made their own handwritten notes in it, which is very helpful in this case. But how are you supposed to figure that out without having a handwritten note in your manual? Trial and error? I love I trial guess. and error. My favorite game mechanic. Now that okay. looks like a fair trade. Thank you, <laughs> whoever in this manual. <laughs> we have ourselves a trade, my friends. Huzzah. You drive a hard bargain, my friends, but your offer was fair. Please take the salt and may it save you from that looked like a lot of gold. Day. We got the salt. Let's hightail back to Mansa Musa so he can get his show on the road. You just gonna leave that there? Salam, travelers. I guess so. Okay. <laughs> Distinguished guests, my gratitude knows no bounds. How well and faithfully you have obtained 60, this most people? excellent and essential mm. salt. This amount of salt is good for I them. I must alert my retinue. Let okay. the glittering it's pilgrimage enough. begin. Just like the bread, it's representative. Ooh, note. Perfect. Note. Musa's departure swept up a C note. Okay, we're missing one there. Um. Salam. Uh huh. Oh, it was under there. Holy pilgrimage! You found the last piece of Give the, the salt to a deer. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh, sorry, I already gave it to Musa. Wait. Good job. I'll okay, the leading camel. Goodbye. Yeah, sorry. I guess some camels are gonna. There's no deers around. That's the thing. Camels mm. are the closest thing. Wow, the Chronopedia helped point us right at that camel. That's right. The it was a fun fact the in desert. the Chronopedia. Well, you probably could have guessed it anyway. We busted Bug Zapper. He Bug Zapper. Thief everyone's been buzzing about. All right, Bugs. His clothes Gigs change up. color. <laughs> your sorry mug yeah, they would have. The us. villains would have had a bigger role in the show, I think. Great going! You busted Bug Zapper and you saved the day from Mansa Musa by snagging that salt with your clever balancing act. Indeed. Because of you, Mansa will make his Hajj to Mecca. And spread his wealth around, and by golly, jolly old Molly will hit the heights of glory. You've done excellent work, as usual. Can you continue on and take another case? Uh, not today. Not today. Great work so far. Come back soon, and we'll continue. <laughs> uh... I guess. I thought this was DOS. What is this window? Eh, whatever. Um, yeah, so. Uh, what other cases are coming up later in the game? 
Um, so, case eight, Gutenberg in Germany. Mm, the press. Case nine, the Incan Empire. Oh, yeah. Ten, Interesting. Columbus and the New World. Ooh, nasty um, guy. Da Vinci and the Renaissance. Ooh. Twelve. Oh, oh, I have a fun fact about uh, Da Vinci. Mm. He's played by famous voice actor. Just checking that I'm correct about this. Nope, I'm not. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 12, Aztec Empire. Oh, they got Incans and Aztecs. Mm. Interesting. That's cool. 13, Shakespeare. William Shakespeare, played by famous character actor Charles Martinet. Martinet. Really? I never knew which one it was. Yes, Mario Mario himself. <laughs> he does a lot of roles in other games, you know. 14, the 13 American colonies. Thanks for the link, Gibbon. 15. Yeah, more America stuff. That's Lewis and Clark in the Pacific Northwest. America again. Beethoven in Vienna. Charles Martinet also plays Beethoven. <laughs> Edison. Thomas Edison. And I mentioned this to you before, but uh, the game is not always historically accurate because it portrays Thomas Edison as not a jerk. Oh. <laughs> anyway. And then Yuri Gagarin. Oh, yeah, Yuri Gagarin, that's cool. Yeah, the space race one. you got to help him in his space capsule and stuff. Mm. And then there's the final one where you catch Carmen San Diego. Current day. Mm. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. But uh, we're going to stop here for today. Thank you for joining us. Mm. Yeah. Like I was saying, it's an interesting game in the franchise because it changes the genre so much and like just a couple years after this the parent company Braderbund is bought by Softkey who are using the name The Learning Company from another company they acquired and then not long after that Mattel acquires them Mm. so they all come under the Mattel umbrella and then Mattel re-released this game Um, that's where the Great Chase Through Time name comes from it's from that re-release and then yeah, the series has gone through various iterations since that point. Oh. Um, well, they in 2004, they did a game on the Xbox, PS2, and GameCube called The Secret of the Stolen Drums. Oh. From the description, it sounded like a Sly Cooper clone. Um, and then later on, they sort of go back to educational type games. Later games, unfortunately, seem to replicate the original format of the series, where it's like moving from place to place and just quiz questions and clues and stuff. This point-and-click style, I think, is really cool. Um, Mm. uh, But it's not like what the series is most remembered for, I guess. So Yeah. Yeah. Having seen it now, I'm pretty Mm. sure I did at least try it once somewhere. Um, okay. Because I remember that boat scene, but mm. I could not work out what to do. <laughs> yeah. So I was obviously a really rubbish uh, gamer. Well, the guide always gives you hints and stuff, but... Um... Yeah, I think it was probably in like a library computer or something, so I wouldn't have had the manual or anything yeah. like that. It was just like, run the game. I mm. don't know what to do. Mm quit the game (laughs) but it's really using the language of point and click games at the time so Mm. maybe if you weren't familiar with those yeah all i'd ever done was down the manhole which is not really a point and click adventure game it's just a yeah that's clicking game it's really simple like it doesn't have the inventory dragging things around and stuff um yeah we should play that sometime Eh, it's lame. <laughs> it's not really a game. Okay. <laughs> um, well, that'll do it for today's stream. Thank you for being with me on this. All right. It's very good to have your perspectives on history. Um, oh, Gibbons looking at footage of the secret of the drums or whatever and um, agreeing with the, the Sly Cooper clone type thing. Yeah, I think that's what they were going for. (laughs) Um, But yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, This has been really fun. Mm. 
this is the best common San Diego game. <laughs> well, it's the only one I've played, but yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And educational. Mm. And so final assessment on like historical accuracy and stuff. I mean, it's pretty good for a video game. Mm. It's probably, I don't know, it, it's targeted like a primary school audience. Yeah. So it's a bit, it's a bit light on, mm. um, but. I do enjoy the myth busting. It's also, I can see it's very America centric. Mm, especially um, later on when you get into the colonial era. Yeah. I'm in, I'd be interested to see how Columbus and uh, the American colonies are treated because mm. that's uh, mm. Yeah. Probably quite whitewashed, I would say. Mm, or at I know, least a lot less violent. I know Sacagawea is a character in some of, in one, in one of the later um, cases. Mm hmm. That's cool. Uh, yeah. That's all I remember. <laughs> um, oh, I was going to say, yeah, like the great man theory. Mm. You're going to continue to get that going forward in this yeah. game, I think. Yeah. And like sometimes, like with Mansa Musa, mm. it really is down to like his decision to go on Hajj. Mm at this scale mm -hmm. that causes all these things. But then, like, uh, yeah, Julius Caesar's impact on history, uh, like some, but you could argue that, like, a lot of it was happening anyway. Like, mm -hmm. the Roman Republic was falling apart because uh, the empire was too large for the way that the administration was structured and it relied too much on, like, private people to contribute anyway you're not interested in Roman <laughs> economics um but, but the the culture of rome line i see is like every every other emperor started naming themselves after him you know yes not immediately though oh. um so in because caesar gets assassinated right yeah and then there's like a division right and a massive civil war mm. between the people who killed Julius Caesar, basically mostly the senatorial class, and then the people who are on his side, so his family, more or less, um, and his friends, um, and they win, and that's why you end up with, hey, Julius Caesar was an amazing guy. Mm. If the other side had won, which they could have done, mm. um, you wouldn't have Julius Caesar was an amazing guy. You would have Julius Caesar was a guy who declared himself dictator and then we stabbed him because he was getting too big for his boots. Um, I think you would and then eventually the... get an emperor system anyway, but maybe it would be more of an oligarchy than a, like a single person emperor. Um, but because the followers of Julius Caesar wanted to lionize him in order to do that, like you get, Octavian is his son, mm. and he, I think it's Octavian, or, um, <laughs> and like he's using the I am the son of Julius Caesar, mm. I'm going to be the next Julius Caesar as like his stick, uh, his shtick, I mean. Mm. So it's his platform. Yeah, yeah. Just think we could have, instead of the month being called July, it could have been called Brutai. Mm hmm. <laughs> Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> history is so fascinating. Ah, I love history. <laughs> history nerd, history nerd. <laughs> Thank you so much. No worries. All right, we're going to stop the stream. Okay, bye everyone. Oh, the DOS window has captured my cursor. Oh yeah, I should mention the way I've played this is through a program called Vilebox, which wraps up... Um, uh, all of the common San Diego games that got PC releases into a DOS box thing. Um, and you can get that from Internet Archive. I'll put a link in the description. How do I, is there a host button? I can alt tab. Yeah, that works. Okay. Okay. See ya. Bye.